this is a Montana Prairie. First one of these we've seen. Uh, come from a customer that actually had another van. I can't remember specifically what it was, but they started talking to us about doing an upgrade to their previous van. Um, but they weren't 100% sure that they were super happy with that particular van. So they weren't 100% sure that they were going to keep it. So during that process, we actually started talking about the pros and cons of, you know, upgrading, not upgrading, what do you like, what don't you like. Um, and they actually went away, had a bit of a think about it, and they found this van, which was actually secondhand, but effectively brand new. So this van um, had two AGM batteries mounted on the chassis down in the rear corner. Um, it had a 20 amp AC charger and it did have a solar regulator in the overhead cupboard um, and that was it. So pretty basic but it did have, it does have a compressor fridge, um, it has a fresh jet, um, Dometic fresh jet already in it. Um, these guys also were, they did a lot of due diligence with us so they um, were very interested in coming and have a look at some of our builds. Um, Obviously, they've seen a lot of social media, YouTube, that sort of thing. So they also wanted to physically come and have a look at some of the builds. And unfortunately, at the time, we didn't have a completed van or, you know, customers were coming to collect the vans or something like that. Our van's a little bit different to these builds. Our van was done three years ago. So it's a little bit different to these builds. Um... So we actually put them in contact with a couple of customers that are local to them. Um, and they got an opportunity to go and have a look at the builds we'd done on their particular vans. And post all of that, <laughs> they booked in with us to get their build done. And um, yeah, essentially the conversation from there was the usual conversation that we have, which is what do you want to do? So ultimately, these guys want to be able to run free of caravan parks um, complete freedom they are going to travel they're not at quite retirement age yet but they're getting closer to that um, probably 10 years away I think from a retirement age maybe not they might be a bit closer than that um, but they want to be able to run their air conditioner they obviously want to be able to run all their kitchen appliances um, and they just realistically want complete freedom. So, so what we've done is we've gone for um, 1200 watts of solar on the roof. And this is, a, this is a pretty good layout for a roof for solar. They've got two panels on the front slope and then four panels on the flat. Um, because it is a fresh jet, there's quite a substantial amount of space on the roof to be able to get around that. We've got a 620 amp hour battery. Uh, we've got our 3000 watt inverter charger. Um, we've got our suite of chargers, MPPTs, so DC, DC, MPPTs. And obviously we've got our Symarine system. So in um, up here in the overhead cupboard, we've got the ability to turn the inverter on. Um, we've got the ability to monitor the system. So um, all very easily located in the overhead cupboard. As I say, they have a compressor fridge, which, you know, won't um, have any trouble running from this system. So with this build, it's all under the seat. They were quite happy to have it taking up as much space as we needed. Each build is different from the perspective of each customer. So as I say, this, this one was designed in a way that we've maximised the roof space. They couldn't actually fit any more solar on the roof. And if they do at some point in time want dust suppression, um, they're probably going to have to go for uh, a wall-mounted version because um, they just won't fit any more up there. It is quite tight up there, uh, which is interesting because this is actually quite a big van. It's about 20 foot, I think. So normally six panels on a 20 foot van is quite comfortable. You've got other options for roof space up there, but they don't. We did have to delete the TV antenna as well. So um, we've done all of that. Um, we've given them an extra Sirocco fan in the overhead cupboard. We tidied up everything in the overhead cupboard here. So we've deleted where their um, solar regulator was. 
as we always talk about, putting a solar regulator, you know, four or five meters of cable between it and the battery is, is not gonna charge the battery appropriately, particularly lithium. Um, so, you know, we always delete that, put that down nice and close to the battery, so. All right, so in summary, um, 1200 watts of solar on the roof, 620 amp hour battery, uh, 3000 watt inverter with a 100 amp charger built into it. A couple of solar regulators, full side marine monitoring system, full compliance to the standard, which is obviously the most important aspect of our builds. Something else to consider as well, one question that quite often comes up when we're doing handovers is um, some people are quite sensitive to light. So these control panels can be darkened. So, you know, um, at night time, once you turn your inverter off, all the lights go off. I'm not going to turn the inverter off at the moment because we've actually got the air conditioner running, but um, once once you turn the inverter off, that one goes to sleep. And Symarine as well can either be programmed to go to sleep after a time, or you can force it to go to sleep just by pressing and holding the back arrow and completely, completely asleep. And then just to wake it up, just push one of the other buttons and it wakes up again remembers where it's at and off it goes so we're just basically putting the lights on the control panels to sleep because this is in the living space and it's pointing directly at the bed so it's super important to be able to do that all right so with this system um, it's quite easy for these guys just to pull up on the side of the road turn the air conditioner on uh, fire up Starlink if they need to do a little bit of work um, they can easily make a coffee make a toasty um, you know, all the convenience items, boil a kettle, uh, run a toaster if they want to. Um, some people are taking air fryers with them, which is a nice option for night time if you're, if you're cooking. So yeah, completely, completely free from the need to connect to power in a caravan park or wherever. Don't even need a generator anymore. So these guys are actually coming to pick their van up this morning. Um, and Part of the process of our builds is to do a thorough handover. We give as much time as a customer needs. Um, so during that handover process, we'll obviously take them through the controls. That's probably the most important aspect of the build. We'll give them an overview of what to do underneath the seat. Should they need to do anything like put, you know, if they store the caravan in a shed or um, put, a, put a cover over the caravan, what do I do? So the differences between what you might have done in the past with an AGM versus what you might do with a lithium battery, um, we take them through all of that. So any of the questions that need to be asked during that process, we take all the time. However, there is a lot of information to go through and part of the service that we offer is um, making sure that the customer understands that if they do have a question or they have, you know, something isn't making any sense or, you know, in the unlikely event that they do have a problem with some of their equipment, um, they can just give us a call and the ability for them just to be able to say, hey Dan, this is what's happening, what do I do? Um, that's always available to them indefinitely. Um, so we, yeah, we, we make sure that you're comfortable with your build and you're also comfortable with the fact that you can give us a call at any point in time to answer any questions. Um, complete freedom off grid. Cheers guys, we'll speak to you next time. Thank you.